the life and soul of all production is guaranteed quality. There are slogans in most factories stating defect reduction targets, but the ultimate aim should always be zero defects. The vital point to remember is that even if we only produce one defective product for every 10,000 produced, that item is still 100% defective to the person who buys it. Pokeyoke or mistake proofing is a vital factor in eliminating defects altogether. Hello again, and welcome to Volume 3 of this three-part series on Pokayoke, Mistake Proofing. In this volume, we're going to take a look at how to put Pokayoke into practice as an essential part of the daily production process. Of course, it's vital to develop the right basic attitude to maintain Pokayoke and the efforts to achieve zero defects. So let's look now at the eight basic rules. Rule 1. Incorporate quality into the process. Although mistakes may occur, it's vital to have a very thorough system of inspection to avoid defects leaving the factory, and also to create a system in the manufacturing process in which mistakes do not lead to defects. Rule 2. Mistakes and defects can be eliminated. A very positive stance must be taken throughout the factory based on the belief that mistakes and defects can be eliminated. And even if errors occur, you can prevent them having bad consequences. Rule 3. Don't hesitate to incorporate good ideas or discard ineffective ones. It's important to try out good ideas, but also to get rid of any which obviously are not effective. This may seem obvious, but hesitation is very common. Don't be afraid to try some things, and don't be afraid to discard others. Rule 4. Instead of finding excuses, find ways to deal with the problem. The point is that if you have time to make excuses, you'd be better off using that time to think about positive action. Rule 5. Get the job done even if the result is only 60% of the target. Immediate action is the important thing, although 100% success may not be possible. Rule 6. Everyone should work together. The whole company must be involved and enthusiastic about eliminating defects. Achieving zero defects can't be regarded as a solo activity. Rule 7. The wisdom of 10 is better than the inspiration of one individual. To be successful, Pokeyoke needs the input of many different ideas from many different people. Rule 8. Seek the true causes. Always begin with the simple question, why did a defect occur? If you keep repeating that question, you are likely to find the true cause of the defect. Then you can launch into how to introduce full mistake proofing. These eight basic rules don't just apply to mistake proofing in efforts to achieve zero defects. They're applicable to any kind of improvement activities. The point about pokayoke is to improve the general efficiency and quality of the work by avoiding waste. For example, let's think about assembly work, where each workpiece has to be carried individually more than three meters to the workplace. 
basically we want to avoid that round trip of six meters. It's a waste of effort and it's a waste of time. It may take at least one second to move each meter and that's a waste of six seconds per workpiece and probably more. That time would be better spent adding value to production. Then productivity would naturally increase. Pocayoke removes waste that creates defects by way of systems that not only don't produce defects, but also by those which can't produce defects. So now, let's look at some case studies in the factory. Let's first look at coil processing for the deflection yoke used in TV sets. One operator is in charge of 12 coil winding machines. Four mistake proofing ideas have been applied here. Now the coil winding machines stop automatically if there is not enough wire, or if any of the wires are damaged. Speaker announcement and a warning lamp provide oral and visual control. Concerning the shape of the deflection yoke, it's important that the coil has the proper number of holes. Before improvement, finished products were visually inspected for defects. There should be a hole like this on both ends of the coil. As you can see, here there is no hole. A sensor was installed inside the machine. If there is any abnormality with the holes, a lamp flashes and an error code number is displayed. The winding machine is also stopped automatically. Another area of problems was the electrodes. Sometimes defects were being produced with an inadequate electrical current. Before improvement, defects could only be separated from good products at the final inspection process, when the amperage was checked. The countermeasure was to set up an inspection function in the coil winding machine. If this detects any irregularities in the electrical current, it stops the machine. A lamp flashes and an error code is displayed.
Before improvement, there were also sometimes problems resulting from the coil being scratched. But the machine only stopped when the processing was complete, so it was often impossible for the operators to detect the problem. As a result, the defective products were passed on to the next process. An inspecting function was incorporated into the machine, which stops the processing as soon as a scratch is detected, even though the coil is not fully formed. Abnormalities are indicated by a flashing lamp and an error code. As you can see, mistake-proofing these days makes a lot of use of sensors and limit switches. These can really improve work efficiency, especially when one operator is in charge of a large number of machines. Their use with warning signals also helps to avoid secondary defects which might otherwise go unnoticed. This is the assembly line for television VLMF, very low frequency magnetic field. The workers used to sit in long lines, which took up the whole floor area. Then they introduced multiple process style operation, with seven operators each handling 13 processes. Many mistake-proofing ideas have been introduced here. Let's look at 12 of them. Magnets have to be installed in the right and left ditches of the separator to correctly meet the electrodes. The north and south poles are color-coded. However, before improvement, operators sometimes mounted one of the magnets in reverse or even missed installing one of them altogether. These mistakes were not discovered until the adjustment process. This is how the magnet should be mounted. But in this case, one magnet is mounted in reverse. The aim of the improvement was to develop a sensor making use of the properties of a magnetic field. If the polarity of a magnet is correct, its pilot lamp lights up, and if both magnets are satisfactorily aligned, a buzzer goes off. So in this case, the visual controls indicate that prescribed conditions have been satisfied. Before improvement, product number labels were stamped manually. Inevitably, some labels were misstamped or not affixed at all, as in the defective item we see here. An automatic numbering machine was installed which presents one properly stamped label for each product.
A VLMF has to be pressure proof between 500 volts and 1000 volts. Before improvement, pressure proofing tests were carried out only by looking at the meter. However, defective products sometimes escape this simple inspection. The pressure proofing testing machines were fitted with pilot lamps and buzzers so that the inspection process was incorporated into the assembly process. There are now both visual and auditory checks on product quality. Soldering of five different spots used to be done manually with a soldering iron. However, the accuracy of the soldering depended entirely on the skill and experience of the individual operator. In some cases, soldering was omitted altogether, and in others, it was very uneven. Automatic soldering equipment was introduced and proved successful in removing these problems. All soldering is now done automatically. Since the width between the connector pins was uniform, there were many cases of connectors being inserted on the connector base backwards. A simple countermeasure overcame this problem. Since the six pin was only a dummy, it was removed to leave a gap and the corresponding hole was plugged up. Now it's impossible to insert the connector backwards. The result? Zero defects. <laughs> 